Hello everyone, and I am back from the World Championship in Seattle, where almost unbelievably my team, Team 7, has come out on top, and we are now the Master Duel World Champions. Myself, Raymond Dai, and our team captain this year, Ryan Yu. It's absolutely, like, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. I don't really know what else to say, and maybe over the next few days or weeks, I can better put into words my feelings, because this has been a dream and an ambition of mine for so long. I figured it would be a better time than ever to show you guys what we played. And even though the deck lists are public, a format like this, so much thought has to go into the decks that I feel like it would still be a fantastic opportunity to explain to you guys what went on through our minds as we played and built our decks for this event. So I'm going to show you the highlight from my coming home stream where Ray, Ryan, and I kind of talked about our decks. If you want to catch me live make sure you also do so on twitch where i'm going to be streaming uh most weekdays when i can around noon or 1 p.m eastern and if you can't there's always my vod channel which you can see in the link down below as well as my highlight channel where some of the best pieces and more entertaining parts of the streams are going to be cut out and then posted there directly but other than that guys thank you all so much for the support let me show you the decks like just get our deck lists from mdm <laughs> Uh, oh, no. <laughs> here, I got this for here. There we go. Oh, nice. That's convenient. Right. Yeah, do you want to talk about the, the shared cards first? Maxi call by Ash. Maxi Ash call by. Uh, uh, it's, like your, it's like your stream, so you should, you can take the lead. Just tell Ray and I when you want us to talk. <laughs> I mean, you guys can add your input pretty much any anytime you want, right? Like, this was a team yeah. thing. I want us all to have our effort. You see, you guys say no way, but there were a lot of teams that did not share call by. Maxi and Ash, I think, were universal. Um, Max, this, Maxi and Ash for everyone. Call by is like not anything creative either. So the other like candidates were Gamma, Talents, Imperm. We felt like a, apart from Call by, but we felt Call by apart from stopping Maxi, which is the most important card of the format. It also was good as a board breaker. Where that's not always true. Like next year, that may not be a thing anymore. But this year specifically, it's good against Phantom and Ubel. It's good against the Fire King cards and Promethean Princess. It's also good against uh, forcing out snow. Like, it's okay, I guess, versus tier. And then just branded, it's pretty good into, like, uh, banishment. And, uh, yeah. Uh, so the biggest thing is we felt like it was broken going first, but then going second. If it was unplayable going second, we wouldn't have played it, probably. But that's not how we felt it was. We felt it, it did actually help you play through fields. As we can, you can see in one of my my games, um, where I decked the guy out, I call by was important because it hit the Karen. So, yeah. I mean, I, this is not, like, a crazy pick. Um, but, yeah. Let's go over... Some of the actual decks. Most boring one first. Good old Fire King Snake Eyes. Uh, Ryan, this is your deck. You got anything to say? Uh, I think we all pretty much agree this was like the most broken deck in the format by far. And the only thing that's like really close to it is U Bell, but it's definitely still a step down. So this was pretty much always going to be in the lineup. Uh, I didn't want to force myself to play 40 cards. I know that a lot of uh, the other teams did. I, I like. I know a lot of the Asian teams definitely did. I'm not sure if Josh did, uh, I but I did. just wanted to. Sorry? I think he did. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he played 40. Uh, and I understand why, but this deck does have a lot of bricks, and I feel like I just couldn't fit everything I wanted to within yeah, 40, so this was, like, the lowest I could go. We're just still going to apply the TCG log logic. Just because it, it's uh, national doesn't mean TCG logic is, is, is all of a sudden wrong. So I think continuing with the same idea of decreased density of bricks and have a higher ratio of hand traps and engine is more important. Because we maxed that engine here. Three Witch and three Alcanics is something that's allowed. Uh, I, I think a couple of the people did it, but it's certainly not standard in this deck. But you just really don't want to break. Because this deck can... When the, this deck goes first, you just want as many ways to beat hand traps as possible. Because I feel like there's this narrative of Fire King Snake Eye being super good into hand traps. But that's not necessarily true, especially in Master Duel, where there's only two bonfires and one Snake Eye Ash. Uh, it's actually quite common for this deck to, like, get... Ashton Alcanics and Pass, or like Valored on Witch and Pass. So I just wanted as many ways to play going first as possible. And then since this deck is so powerful, going second, you also play through stuff with the extenders. So I, I thought there was just no reason not to play through Witch the Alcanics. And the rest of the list is pretty normal. Only one Phonix. Oak is really important for grind games and also some anti nib combos to Pablo. I guess we could explain like why we chose the ratios of like tech cards, right? Like two talents one nib two yeah i was gonna bring that up why we play these odd ass ratios and the yeah. reason is not fully cross out either uh this deck is pretty weak to uh evenly against the decks like granite it's not an auto loss but it certainly is like a cause for concern so valor is the better hand trap in this deck than impermanence which is why the majority of the valors are here i think the other reason as well that i felt was under maxi you wanted to draw valor in this deck where you didn't need to draw the imperms and ubel because you had spirit to draw into 
Yeah, it's honestly a lot of reasons that all point to Valor being good in this deck. Like heat still drying as well, uh, keeping your disruptions hidden, uh, along with the kind of how the fire king deck just naturally layers interruptions. I guess we'll just say uh, this. We decided to split up the Imperms and Valors between the two core hand trap decks, being Fire King and Ubel. We designated those decks as the two decks we wanted to be like this broken one card combo with hand trap type deck. But it's important to note that even though like Ray's deck is not a cross out deck, it has similar ratios of like the Nib and Imperm Valor stuff. Uh, for one, it becomes harder to play around when you have like the mix of cards. So we knew we wanted to split stuff up and make it hard for people to to kind of uh, make a read against us. And then the next step was figuring out why, which <coughs> ratios would go in each spot. So that's why I like this two Valors here. There's uh, one Drill because we felt Drill was actually pretty good this format. It can hit Fire King and New Bell and Tier and Brand. Like it has just high will potential against pretty much every meta deck to end their turn. And because the Fire King deck had crossed out, that was also just a reason for me to want to respect that with this. Pretty sure everything else is standard. The one Nibiru the is something that a lot of teams did. It's extremely good. Being able to draw into it off of Maxi makes it so your opponents can't confidently OTK you, take the challenge. Uh, and it also just having the one there in general, uh, along with all the other one of or two of hand traps, makes them respect a lot of cards, which is super important in Master Roll because the world like, format, aside from like, the DK stuff, Scouting is something that's going to happen. So having a mix of things makes it more unpredictable for people to counterplay your deck. Uh, and then I guess the only other thing that's interesting is like two talents. Yeah, we just had one talent in Jesse's deck. It's as like a thrust for of <laughs> Best target, also just a good card. Yeah. It looks like weird, the weird OCG <laughs> logic of a bunch of one ofs, but like it, it's it's very different in the six deck format because spreading out your staples means people have to play around it constantly. Because if you know talents is only in one deck, then you just never have to play around it in the other matchup. And, uh, mm -hmm. and a small tournament like 12 people, even without the deckless leaks, you're going to know what people are playing at least roughly very quickly. It is important that you are able to keep a lot of ambiguity there because it makes it really hard for people to play around you. Like, it's not a meme what, what the Josh's old uh, remix is about is perfect information. Information is huge in Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, making it as as, as mysterious as uh, possible is huge. It, there's also like sort of diminishing returns, right? Like, you don't want to put every good card into one deck. Uh, it like you get a little bit of value spitting them out. I think it it, it it doesn't matter a little bit that specifically we gave you the best deck partially because uh, the way national worlds works is you have to get top two in the group. Whoever wins the most rounds gets in. But if the rounds are tied, then whoever won the most, then whatever team won them won the most games. If that's tied, then it's whoever's team leader had the most wins. So your team leader being a uh, breaker is important because it can very reasonably come up. Like, it is very likely that groups end in a, in a two- or three-way tie for second or first place um, with X2s. It, it, we see we saw it happen in, in the other group, not our group. If, like, Josh's team did not win two more games, it would have been brought to a leader tiebreaker, and Josh's team would have lost. So it, it, it is an important, like, part of the uh, of the tournament structure that we kind of decided, okay, giving the what we conceive or perceive to be the best deck to uh, to Ryan. Not that he needs the help to, to win, but obviously just stacking the odds in our favor. It was also kind of just convenient because I, like, Jesse did want to play Tyr and I did want to play Fire King. And, you know, Ray wasn't very happy with Evo, but I guess we can talk about that later. <laughs> Ray's a hater. Yeah, the, the one other thing, I guess, for the extra deck of this deck, uh, Heat Soul is not standard, but it should be because that card is super giga busted. Like, a lot of the lines where you make Apollo before committing your original or your island uh, get a lot more value if you can go Heat Soul before that. It just applies so much pressure. You're drawing into a bunch of hand traps or tech cards, like maybe even random Kirins. Uh, there's just really no reason not to play it. And then Anima is something that came up a lot in testing. I didn't summon it. I don't think it ever mattered during the actual worlds. I'm the one that actually okay. summoned it to steal a monster. It came up for Jesse, but uh, <laughs> for me, Anima was just to potentially break words like with Apollo or uh, Soul of Rage, four set interruptions, especially because I'm playing Talents. It works very well with those cards. And it just, it can come up in spots where I have to Zealant as something to an arrow and then Anima suck it up if it's something I don't want to destroy. Just a very useful card. Uh, and then the cards that I didn't play, that a lot of other Fire King players did, were the Galaxy Lord, which I think is just unnecessary. I think you can play around Nib by just using the materials instead of XC something. Almirage, I just don't think is necessary. I don't see how it really matters. And Second Princess, which is also just like, not something that really comes up. This deck is so good at grinding even without it. So I think people use this as a way to play around Nib, and I think it's really fake. So their idea of playing around Nib is they'll mm -hmm. uh, Princess, threaten to revive Arvada and get Nib there, while keeping Flame Merge on field. And what that accomplishes is then afterwards you Flame Merge revive too, then you get to make Princess and revive something again. The problem is though, think about that. What do you actually do after that? And the thing is, you make Whale and Pass. 
that's not actually good. So it's a fake way of playing around Nib that like, at least the TCG we talked about in February. And as Fire King stopped mattering in the TCG, we weren't exploring it more, but um, some Astral players kind of never really went back to that or never really adapted that. It, it's just that entire method of playing around uh, Nibiru is just not even a good way of playing around Nibiru. So that's why mm -hmm. like Princess isn't super huge. The reason like you would ever want a second Princess is Nightmare, uh, not Nightmare, uh, Kashtir Unicorn, I guess. Kashtir Unicorn also Soul Release. Uh, but we kind of figured the Soul Release thing would be negligible. I'm trying to like, hopefully switch against decks that would play that anyway. And like, for Unicorn, no one's gonna play pure, pure cash for worlds. And like maybe pure snake eye with cash tier cards was playable. We thought maybe one team would bring that. But it's still absolutely not like something that warrants an extra deck spot if it's just that like one game potentially and it's still unlikely to come up. How about Divine Temple and Doolittle Chimera? I we didn't even neither of those cards even crossed our minds for a minute. Like those I was so been, surprised. Yeah, I, I, for, for me like both those cards have been out of contention for before we even practiced like this deck for worlds. Because uh, the yeah. TCG, I never liked those cards as well. I mean, Chimera's kind of just with more. And Tem Temple's, like, cute. I do think Temple's better in the TCG for this deck than Master Duel. Because it comes up more in lines where you're, like, drawing copies of Witch in combination with, like, a Snake Eye Ash. Or, like, and both those cards you don't see as often in Master Duel. So, I always think it's unnecessary. It's one more. Yeah, I mean, I, I could, like, see more of a debate for it in the TCG. But in Master Duel, it's definitely, like, less yeah. good even then. Not that it's horrible. Like, there's a good... Temple especially is, like, a good quality card, but we just didn't feel it was necessary for this deck. I also saw a question for Ray and Ryan. What, why no Sky Striker, guys? Do, do they want you, the, the actual the I didn't steal anything! Yeah, yeah, You didn't actual, activate it. Yeah, talk about we why also, and why we didn't play it. Okay, so Striker is good with anonymity, because uh, it can absolutely destroy Fire King and Yubel with the right hands going second. Like, it just absolutely mauls them. There's nothing they can do. Uh, but at Worlds... People know that you have it. They could force you to start, or they could just pass their turn when you make them start, and you'll lose. Or you can <laughs> you just need to link a JTK, pretty much. Or you can just draw bad, because the deck isn't always like super gas. You can just brick on random striker cards if you don't draw any of the powers. Got, like soul release, talents, thrust, and just can't play because they don't do anything. Yeah, that striker is also a deck that's like an extreme knowledge check, where if the opponent knows what they're doing, it gets super super bad. Especially with playing around cards like Talents, Thirst, and Soul Release. It just wasn't really that good for Worlds. And, like, I was playing it on Rated for fun, and I ran into some Worlds competitors. And some of them would misplay against me and let me win. But a couple of them just, like, wouldn't fall for any of the tricks, and I would just not be able to do anything. <laughs> and as Ray said, I stole the thrusts. What that means is, like, obviously you have to share the cards. Um, one of the biggest things with my deck was, like, the deck is not playable without thrust. It's a huge, huge reason to play the deck. And uh, we tested Striker without thrust and decided, like, you cannot play both decks. Thrust was way too important to both of those decks. So we'd have to pick one, and we decided Tier was just a better option. They just didn't want me to use all my royals. I don't want to. God. Y'all don't understand. Ray hates you, Bell. He wouldn't shut up about how much he hates you, Bell. And like, a that week is before, so bad. Like, two days before deck submission, we had a call and we're like, all right, Ray, if you fucking hit you, Bell, that much, I'll stop playing tier. I'll play you, Bell, and you can switch to Sky Striker and Brandon and take the thrusts. And Ray's like, no, no, we have the better decks. He'll suck it up and play you, Bell. But he was not happy about it. I mean, they worked out. <laughs> it did work out, but I asked I asked Ray on the on the bus uh, back from um, the studio the the state where we played, like do you like you Bell now? And Ray, what's the answer? No, oh, fuck no. <laughs> mm. Fuck no. You heard it here. All, All right, right, let's go to a more interesting deck, Ryan. So we wanted uh, to use the same philosophy we used last time with our uh, our, our secondary decks. And what we did is we kind of made like a tier list. These are the best decks of the format. We'll pick three of the best decks. So we had as the four best decks, Branded, Tier, Striker, not Striker, fuck. You guys have poisoned my mind. Branded, Tier, Ubel, and Fire King. And uh, pick three of the best four as our main decks. So we picked Tier, Ubel, and Fire King. And then we picked secondary decks to cover the worst matchups of those prior decks. Uh, and where they those decks stood in the tier list wasn't as important. We wanted to find a specific role the deck needed to fit. And then you find the best deck doing that job. So one of the things the Fire King we needed to solve was it has a rather it doesn't have spell and trap interaction. So it, against spell and traps, it can be kind of awkward. Obviously, the popping is very good against normal trap cards. Evenly matched is an exception because it's not really a trap. So like versus soul release, like Sky Striker next. Like that's what what Sky Striker was for, right? You were able to rip apart the grave, which is another weakness of Fire King, 
and spells could almost just go uninteracted with. Uh, and that's what like Emery's flu deck did, right? It's shifter plus good spell cards that the fire king deck cannot deal with. So the Vanquish Soul serves to counter that by a deck that is very good against spells that target because everything you do just tags out. Uh, shifter's not a big deal. In fact, you play it yourself because against striker shifter is good. And if you go first versus another deck, like if you call the, call the matchup wrong, you can still win the roll or draw shifter or maxi and still win the game. It is a counter pick deck. That is literally it. The thing is, your, your, your secondary deck can't be only focused on one matchup and suck with everything else, because no matter what, you're going to be making a 50-50 call against what your opponent's playing, right? Because if, say, your opponent has this guy striker deck and you want to queue this, but their second deck is tier, it's risky because tier is a really bad matchup for this deck. Uh, and if your opponent predicts you to play Vanquish Soul to counter their Sky Striker, then they can just queue the tier deck. And if they get tier into Vanquish Soul, then obviously it's very rough. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind when you're approaching the this logic as well. And it can be a bit tricky to find the deck that, that kind of fits all of these kind of qualities at the same time. And that's where Vanquish Soul had to be. But we decided it was pretty good. And even for stun decks as well, obviously you have like sizable monsters that can clean up uh, normal summons as well as it can pop, bounce, pop acro. So you're not like overly like worried. Uh, and then we decided to throw a heavy in here just to have something a little extra to deal with the stun deck slash striker stuff uh and then you draw a fair bit with this deck as well like if you know you're playing a certain matchup you can draw obviously with these but then borger should get you like two draws and you can get there was there not much attention to switch to salad from the get-go then uh we'll get to that when we get to my decks We're, we'll go one at a time yeah against the decks that this was supposed to be queued against like striker and stun it's like a pretty slow matchup and it's also very favored as long as you can stop playing because this deck is kind of notorious for bricking <laughs> so that's why we maximize the engine yeah, like and you couldn't play three... Prosperity because we wanted to give it to a main deck. Yeah, three Mad Love isn't normal. Uh, neither is three Caesar. Uh, and three Burger could be two. Like, I know uh, Judeo play only two of all of those cards. But we just played three to make sure I, I'd be able to play the game as much as possible. And then, of course, three Small Worlds. Just absolute, like, we just wanted to draw playable because those matchup, like, Striker is such a good matchup as long as I can literally start playing the game. That's also why there's uh, Called Buys. Even if it's not good against uh, Striker and Stun. It's literally just, as if I can start playing, it doesn't matter if I have dead called by, I'll win. So I just don't want to get like ashed on a stake or soul or something when I could have called by to get to my engine. No, TK, uh, this, think... this is a this is a big one. Um, you're not oh, trying to put yeah. just good cards into your deck. So Ryan can explain why it's actually not uh, the right role. Yeah, yeah, that card sucks against the decks that I want to play against with this. Uh, it's like bad against uh, striker. It's bad against any like stun variant, and it's also just like good against fire king to an extent, and also especially against Jubal, but I'm not trying to play those matchups. And I also don't think it actually changes your win rate much, because against Jubal, even if I have their camp, I'm still going to lose if I go second. Like, it, I, I'm not going to be able to set it and take the board. And if I go first, hopefully I should just be able to win anyway with engine, because it's not like Vanquishel's engine is bad against combo. Like, it has a Raigeki, multiple field wipes and disruptions and hand traps, so it's not really something that, like, it lets you win that matchup as something that you wouldn't be able to do normally. And against Fire King Snake, I think not even that good because, like, they do have a lot of different types in their deck. So there wasn't really a situation where it would be improving my winning really much. It's, it's the biggest thing is you don't want to just build a good deck for the sake of being a good deck, right? Being conscious of the surroundings, the format is uh, is important, yeah. especially yeah. For, for secondary decks when they're not being used as much. That's where it's important, right? Like, building with purpose, I think, is a huge yeah. difference. I mean, it's like context, right? That's all. If you look at the extra deck, it's also pretty apparent. Like, I'm playing Black Cluster Soldier. Because against stun decks, it's just so broken. Uh, instead of, like, maybe a Hina or something, or a Dark Charmer. Because those would be good against more of the meta decks, but I'm not trying to really play those matchups. Why 2 Chaka 9? Uh, 2 Chaka 9 was so I could make a 6 mad Zeus, if, in case it came up. And it's 2 Chaka 9. Uh, that was Jesse's idea. Because if I don't want to make a 6 mad Zeus, then I can go, like, Chaka 9, Borobo Zeus, and then I still have a Chaka 9 and a Dryden left in my extra deck. And Dryden's Dryden card in his own right. <laughs> Dryden's ex extremely good in certain matchups, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this actually like, has so much space open, especially considering we couldn't play the generic cards like Phoenix because other decks already have them. And this deck doesn't mm -hmm. make those cards often enough that you could ever really realistically, like, like, uh, afford, like, realistically justify taking a Phoenix out of a real deck and putting it in this. We never really considered, like, Unicorn or, or Ice Heart. You kind of just want Fenrir, because that card's super broken for attributes and also just as a body. But Unicorn's, like, not a good attribute. So it's kind of just like a go first only card. It also uh, makes you worse in a maxi when usually this deck should be good into maxi. Like that combined with like adding birth and theosis as bricks, it's just all like not really worth it. Why two Jalongs? Two Jalongs pretty standard. It's not a starter, uh, but you do like 
if you open Raz and Jalwang and you need another fire, Raz and can't add itself. Uh, and it comes up in grind games or banishing up desires of small world, but you never really need three. I'm sure I can answer why no scare cash. It's just the brick. I think that makes mm -hmm. much explanating. How often was this played? Three times, right? Twice. So I queued it against uh, KG because he had the super heavy FDK deck. And if I go first against that, I should absolutely. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, 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 I should sorry. just destroy him. Uh, yeah. And going second, I can draw Shifter. So it gives me better odds than my Fire King deck. And against Purely, uh, his, his uh, Purely deck had like Trolls and Mourners and Veilers. Like so many cards that I was scared. Like I could even win the roll with Fire King against him, get Maxied, or just like get hand trapped to death and lose. So he could just go first against me, draw four cards, and I had. I would have no V-curse. So I figured that against Purely as well, my Vanquish will match up be better. Because if I win the die roll, I should win pretty easily, especially because so many of his hand traps are dead. And even if I go second, I have the chance to draw like Shifter. I, I got really lucky because I ended up drawing Max with Ash against him. So he didn't get to play much. But yeah, going second and first, I think for both of his decks, Vanquish is better than Fire King. And I queued it one more time, again against a super heavy deck. Because uh, <laughs> it's just, I have a better chance to draw Shifter. Yeah. Uh, I lost the roll and just got FTK pretty much. Yeah, it but matter. I think it's fine. Uh, and then Quanto the guy's other deck was sorry. Uh, your next time. And this deck destroys your next time. Yeah. So, yeah. Until asked, what uh, what about Durandal? And <coughs> also, why Fenrir in this over tier? So, yeah. Fenrir, I think, is fine in tier, but I don't think it's even that broken in, in that deck. I think it's, like, obviously good, but there's enough good cards in that deck. I don't, I'm not, like, stressing over it. <laughs> but in mid range decks, Fenrir shines really well. Because it really punishes, like, makes Maxi almost negligible, lets you break fields better, which sometimes mid-range decks can struggle with. Maybe Ryan can point out. Also, the attribute stuff, Ryan can probably explain better, though. Yeah, I mean, it's more just like Fenrir and Vanquish Cell is better than Fenrir in tier. Not not that it's bad in tier, but it's just better in this deck. And Durandal's bad because you don't have enough bodies that you could use for Razen. It's like Madloff, Pantera, and Fenrir. So it's like not a consistent way to Razen. So Small World's better. Small World's a neg one, but it's worth it. Chaos Link was cool because you can't target it. It's like, like these random decks to target. Because remember, this deck is built against, built to play against decks that are very spell heavy and have those target spells like Widow Anchor, Snatch Deal, Tornado Dragon, same thing for Stun. There's no Exiton in here. Maybe you want to talk about that? Uh, Exiton just sucks. It's kind of like, you know how uh, people say that like, when your opponent makes Typhon, it's like a conceding. Yeah. yeah like the same the same. Thing. Uh, no Bistrals, by the way. We 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 explained already. Same as Tikaboo. This this deck isn't supposed to be played versus the, versus graveyard decks. Yeah, it, like if I was playing this for like a TCG tournament or like just in a vacuum, sure, I'd probably play Bistrals because Magna Searching Caesar is great, and then they're fine against Fire King and Ubel. But I'm not trying to play against those decks. I'm trying to play against Runic Stone, Sky Striker, where Bistrals are the like, kind of mediocre. Magna Mutt is good. It was in the deck at one point, but we ended up giving it to another deck, which we'll talk about later. Is right in the call. Is he sleeping? He was sleeping, and then we woke him up, and now he's not responding. Did he go back to bed? Okay, then let's move on to uh to Ray's decks. Ray, your favorite deck. We want to talk about it. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, let's see. You Bell, very nice. Um, <laughs> I don't know what there is to talk about. This deck is like I don't think we did anything innovative. We we did probably the Ibli stuff. Yeah. So if you guys aren't familiar, sure. there's uh. There's an Ibli combo that's pretty popular. And I, I, we expected more built to be on it, but there's still like, I guess, two or three teams that played it. What, what it is is pretty much you gigantic for Ibli. You make Elf and give them Ibli. Then you make IP. So you have like IP, Rage, Phantom, Elf, and Ibli them. And then uh, if you they get rid of the Ibli, you can Elf back the Ibli. And then IP plus Ibli into SP and then give them back the Ibli. And the SP will still banish. Like if they made a Link 1, for example, which is why I needed two Link Rebos, specifically two. Yeah, and then... When I was testing the Ibli stuff, I just was bricking horrendously. Like I just <laughs> couldn't so even climb and raided. I like like between like driver, uh the two U Bell shitters, what else? Like the unchained cards that's like five bricks already. Any hand trap is unplayable. Chaos summoning beast we added. It just it was just horrible all around. Um if we knew about the Geo Transverser line, would we have ever considered that with Ultimate Nightmare? Because that's pretty cool. Hell no. Okay, Ray, Ray doesn't like the bricks, that's true. Um, I mean, I don't just, think you need it. Yeah. It's kind of tacky. Like, this deck's good at OTK anyway. But... Explain Chaos 70 Beasts, like... Jesse. I don't like that card, but Ray insisted, so Ray can say it. It's it's only for if you open, like, a single Gates as, like, your playable card. So, like, you go Gates, search uh, Dark Beckoning Beast, Dark Beckoning Beast searches Chaos 70 Beasts. 
and you can at least end on rage plus escape otherwise it's like not needed because like if you open dark beckoning beast you can just you, you you can just search the other dark reckoning beast in normal and you make the same board but specifically with gates and because gates is is at three um i do i did think it was worth playing i don't think i bricked too much with chaos summoning beast actually which is like ideal i'm gonna go over why we chose gamma for this deck um there's also yeah so for you bell there's a lot of um like opportunities for you to like threaten gamma either with like a uh, lotus effect um you can you you can uh gamma and add you can same with like nightmare throne and gates so all three of those cards present like a good open game state for gamma as well as you can just threaten a first action phantom which is like something that they also have to consider so gamma was like super good in this deck it also was like really good for breaking boards randomly i think i did that like once or twice activating gamma on your own turn very strong so uh, yeah the just of... sorry the in, in case it... like anyone maybe doesn't know that the reason that the phantom and gamma thing is so repressive is because if your opponent wants to max see you they have to choose to play into phantom or gamma so it's kind of like a no-win situation yeah, they're flipping a coin, I which know is Muckcracker. what we want to make them do, right? Because it means there are chances for us to get high rolled. I know Muckcracker. I don't think Muckcracker is very needed. In my testing, I've wanted Muckcracker twice in maybe about, like, over 100 games. I felt the same way about Cross Sheep, to be honest, but Cross Sheep, after we put it in, like, impressed me more. Um, I think Cross Sheep matters with the one-card Lotus play, and then also just OTKing in some lines. I also like yeah, the it, kind of turn into Elf. The elf is broken. Yeah, yeah, good. Elf, elf bridging into or Crossy bridging into elf was like actually like something I noticed that came up a lot more. So I was happy to include that. Um, elf is just really good. I think two Yama is also like I think two Yama is like pretty important. I'm like pretty happy with the extra deck actually. You guys consider super producer with Yama? I was never playing more bricks in my deck. Oh, you have to play Beatrice um, and Muck and super producer. That's so much. No, and that's. There's so much extra utility and stuff gone just for a weak combo because Muckraker is all, like every single part of that is vulnerable to hand traps. Every single part. So that sounds not good. Phoenix came up a decent amount. I was happy we played it. Which card? Phoenix. Yeah, I mean, Phoenix is a good card. Yeah. Like, I'm, no one's gonna ever. Like, I don't I, no one's gonna really that. clown somebody for playing oh, Phoenix. Man. That card is so cool. I mean, it's good. Yeah. Also, yeah, also, going back to the Terran card question, um, it comes up with Throne, so. Oh, what card? Um, uh, Terran Carnet. Someone. Oh, oh, sure, said sure. Something about that. Someone say why you play this? Is it just in standard? Yeah. Point? Yeah. I mean, it's pretty standard, but. Okay. Uh, anything else for the Ubel deck? Whether it's uh, Ray has something to say or a question from the chat. How does Chaos Beast feel in the deck? I mean, so so Gates is like broken in this deck because of all the synergies. So like you have to play Gates, but you also have to play the targets that Gates searches in order to even put it on the field. The Beckoning Beast stuff is like, it's kind of ass because like it's super vulnerable to like Valor Imperm. But Gates is like insane because even if they have Imperm, like you can still play through it uh, with Al Mirage. So, and, and also just like reviving like Spirit and Grave is just like insane as like an extender. So that's like the reason why you play the Beast stuff. I prosp for you, Bell, because you, Bell, fucking sucks in bricks. Yeah. Why one Valor, two Imperm instead of three Imperm? Uh,. We wanted to like spread hand traps around. Um, that was m mainly it. Keep in mind it's like a shared card pool, so if you see the ratios, something some things might look strange. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I like if you go back to the explanation from the Fire King deck, it's the same. The all the core good job. hand traps were split between those two decks, the exception being a single Nibiru in this race second deck, which we'll go over in a second. A second Yama, I think second Yama is important for grind. I, well, it's I just agree. like it's not necessary, but it's just like very. Uh, I think it's incredibly good. It's like a luxury to have, and if you can fit it in, why not? What did you banish from Prosperity? Um, usually it was Phoenix, Cross Sheep, and Elf. Uh, if it was Amaraj, my hand, hand, hand did, lot. yeah, Amaraj. Yeah, if I didn't need Amaraj, then Amaraj would be in, in like, because yeah, that card's either the most important card in your deck or the most useless card in your deck, <laughs> depending on your hand. Would a pure race help for breaking? Um, yes, but I, I don't think we had space for it. But uh, pure race, I think going forward, I was pretty impressed with how OCG used pure race, so I, w I don't think it's a bad card. Yeah, we just to make sure like all of our decks had enough non engines so that could go second comfortably. But there's definitely an argument to be made that we could increase the card counts in this deck a little more and play the pure race. Maybe throw a mourner and ogre and just uh, balance it out and then give you a little less, like lower the density of bricks. That's always something you could use. Same, same approach to Fire King. Uh, also, <laughs> one thing like about pure race, it's not bad. 
But we also wanted to make our deck counts match when possible. So obviously it wasn't possible for Jesse, and it wasn't really possible for me either, because Vanquishal has to be Forty. In fact, it has to be not Forty. But for Ray, both of his decks could be in the same ballpark. So we wanted to make sure that they wouldn't be able to tell with the cube. Yeah, so you'll see that in the next second. But he prefers three spirits over two. Because uh, spirit is a pseudo starter. Also, drawing it into Max C when they're taking the challenge is like super important. Yeah, it's so actually the biggest reason you both frustrating to play against. Because like, they can make small boards if you hand trap them. But mm -hmm. then if they Max C you, you just can't do anything. Because if you try to go for game, you lose to spirit. So It's crazy and that... Everyone from the final row of like the setup made day two. Yes, yeah, so the way it was set up is there. I'm sure some of the content creators have some photos and stuff because now they were walking around a bit. Um, but there was like four rows of uh of like four by curtains four grid, pulled up, and then each curtain had like four different pods. There were the or there were twelve. Oh, it was three three rows. My bad. So twelve teams, mm -hmm. and our way. row, the back row, was the three duels cup winners, and then the world uh, winner from last year. And those were the four teams that qualified. So all the the first two we were the back row. The first two rows all all uh, bummed out. Obviously, that's not the real story because it was it was close. Like uh, at least for our team and Josh's team, like we were there on breakers. Or no, we weren't there on breakers, but it, it was it was not like we were uh, <laughs> leagues ahead. I, of I mean, there were a lot of teams that were, I could have won that easily this weekend. Second deck for Ray. The deck Ray prefers. It's probably the best second deck of our lineup. Well, Pearly was like pretty high, highly rated on a tier list. It was like probably the fifth best deck, maybe or around that, because like it can very yeah. much hold its own without needing it to, to be a good matchup. Uh, also, an opening Duster Cosmic. That's just Insane. not working. Nice. White Clips. Uh, it covers like Fossil Dyna. It covers uh, Centurion Synchroing. Um, you can just use it as a board breaker. Very yeah, very I mean, we should probably say what matchups this was for. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the Pearly deck was built for Runic Stun. Any like. Other back row decks like Lab and the Centurion were like the main focuses. So like you can see all these cards, like all the non-engine like Duster, Lightning Storm, <laughs> Cosmic, Reboots, Eclipse, like covers those covers that spread very well. And the remaining non-engine that we have is like Maxi Ash, obviously, and one nib, just in case like uh we queued it into a real deck still. We wanted something real to draw off of maxi and if you go first uh you can like still set up a noir uh ideally five mats and that's still like very tough for a lot of decks to deal with even like fire king so we, we felt this deck was like honestly probably had the most like flexibility in um in terms of deck building while still being like a very like real deck yeah we felt like ray could take more risks with this deck or like wouldn't be as risky like he could play this into a deck or into other decks expecting a good matchup more comfortably because with with our second decks if we got the matchup wrong and guessed it wrong what our opponent would play it could be more devastating or more punishing on us because our decks would just be way worse than they should be where uh ray wouldn't have as much of a problem because the difference between you you and pearly is not like crazy this deck is just so ignorant like even if you draw a dead not engine like I saw Ray pitch a ton of Red Reboots or Lightning Storms for early <laughs> spells, it just doesn't matter. Did you even get to use Red Reboot all weekend? I mean, no, he would have used it against Emre, but then he would have yeah. feathered us. You do Duster for turn, you're yeah. so crazy. I remember looking at your hand thinking, alright, we got this, his hand is great. And you do Duster, and I kind of just like, a jaw drop. I'm like, let's fucking go. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Fuck. this deck was like, I, I don't know if Ray mentioned Centurion, but like, the, the two decks that like, this was supposed to destroy were Stun and Centurion. Like those two specifically. It, it turned out that a lot of teams brought Labyrinth to Worlds to beat Ubel. So it was kind of a happy accident for us that this ended up having a great lab matchup too. But really it was just like, you can tell by the non-engine. We picked Eclipse because it's good against the Centurion monsters and good against like a Fossil Dino or a Majesty's Fiend. Cosmic is good against Floods or Centurion cards. Reboot's good against all, like pretty much every non-engine card is supposed to be good in both matchups. Uh, and then there's the one nib, like Ray said, just in case we miscue it. Yeah. The plan after Eclipse is uh that or just set up like huge ass noir any uh any <coughs> thought, other thoughts to close it out ray uh cosmic cyclone is the goat we gotta get you bell themed stuff for right now we gotta sell them on loving you bell you bell is the reason uh, i'm gonna, I'm gonna roll out some purelys <laughs> uh, so i think i saw some ask we're not blending second with this uh we just have a bunch of go second cards because if we go first, we can pitch them. Yeah, I mean, we only go second cards of these four, right? And the reboots, so you have six. Uh, Lightning Strip, too, right? One, yeah, four, six. The Eclipse and Cosmic are fine, yeah. Was there no cut for 40? Uh, you can slim it down to 40, probably cut the nib if you really wanted to, but, like, it's... We wanted it to match the U-Bell count, so... It wasn't lab uh, a possibility for you guys. Yeah, never. Ryan, why no lab? Never. 
Lab uh, sucks. Yeah. Next just isn't good. It's, the deck is just not that good, unfortunately. It's not like it was solving any problems for us. Like, the one matchup I guess that it had that is good is Ubel, and people were playing it for Ubel, like Josh was. The issue is if you queue it into the wrong deck, like Lab into Purely, for example. Oh, you're fucked. Because the deck has to be Not even just the okay, but like, Lab cannot be packing for its life, right? It uh, lab in tier, lab into Tear or Fire King is way worse than into Purely. Without even having the right non engine. If those you matches are so uphill. Not really for the grind, but more so for like um revealing off of like my friend in the random scenario that it does happen. Because it did happen once in testing. So I think someone asked, Did you notice the Centurion Synchro made your OTK easier after the match? Okay, so we like did. we talked about it like literally as yeah. it was happening. Like, oh, we could have just done that, yeah. Yeah. I mean it was only four hundred damage, but like it wasn't needed because you still OTK'd without it. So the one thing I did on on uh on afterthought was normal summoning the purely was a mistake because it turned on a bestial um after he got uh Valor. Oh, you know what else is a mistake? Was... You should have used the straight before activating my friend. Yeah. Um, because if he it's ogre because if he ogre you plus you want to be safe from Valor. Because if he ogres the my friend, you're gonna chain happy memory. Uh, does this just take your bucket list of wanting to world? Or you still want to do TCG? This this is the bucket list for sure. I would not have fought so hard for this if it was a if it wasn't so high up there for me. Uh yeah, all right. This is the pearly deck going to my deck last, which. I, I think is the coolest deck, but yeah. I think everyone would agree you had the coolest deck in Games from Worlds. Um, so the reason with this deck, uh, I feel like Grass and Thrust, or sorry, Thrust, Grass in general is just like, that card means you can beat like almost any deck going second, no matter what. Because uh, you just mill a bunch of cards and you go ham. And we already talked about how Fire King has been a weakness to spell cards because it just can't negate spells. Guess what? Guess what's a spell? This card. And uh, Ubel has the same problem. It can't interact with spells. So the two decks that would have a bad matchup for tier because they put up a bunch of monster negates are weak to spells like Grass. So we hyper-focused on Grass, giving us the seven copies here, which I never drew thrust the entire tournament, except for literally the final game where I bricked on it because I went first and drew multiple thrusts. And tier is Kofium. Yeah, that's right. That's why I won Worlds. How many times I actually roll graph, uh, Grass a few times? Uh, and then the other thing is when you're building Grass deck, you want to fill out Graveyard Effect. So I, I went for the, a lot of traps because... Yeah, people put in a bunch of random effects that should all be Trick Clown to, to give your mills better, but the, the idea behind that is it means if you mill multiples these, they're not dead. But those that only matters if you're already milling a ton of cards. And if you're milling a ton of cards, you don't care. You're already winning the game. You're already super far ahead. The the So, like, I felt it's more important that the cards I milled were really important, were really powerful, which these are. And if I mill more and they're dead this turn, that's not a big deal. And drawing them is also good when you play Horus cards. So I fill up the broken graveyard effects and the ways to put them in the grave, which is why I maxed out fully the Horus engine. To put these in the grave because you can see several games i broke through fields no non-engine just because i had horse cards plus the traps that's fantastic and then i see people saying oh he never bricked when i went second i'm like people complain about these being bricks all the time i built my deck to not be like that mm -hmm. uh, and you may ask why no crime no heartbeat uh the other reason is this deck should be built in a way where every single card in your deck is either a good mill a good draw or both if something is neither is not, none of those then it needs to be very important so emerald tortoise is like the exception there Emerald Tortoise is the, the only card that is, is none of the above. Uh, because you need it. It's just not negotiable. Every other card is good to draw or mill. So Crime and Heartbeat, for example, just suck drawing or milling. So I don't really want... To, like, Yeah, you can search them, but you never need it. And you can make such powerful fields that it's fine. You can get even leads. It's not a big deal. You play with Snows in your grave. It's all right. <laughs> Tortoise is a broken mill. It is a fine mill. It's not good. Other notable things with this deck is no Fenrir because it's in Vanquish Soul deck. You'd probably play it, though, with the field spell. Uh, Dark Ruler was just a searchable thrust target to be the Jaugen lock, um, if they had nothing else besides it. Uh, one Talent, because two were in the other decks. Uh, sea Marriage, giving another normal summon, another Aqua in deck as well. It's important to play three uh, specifically because a common way for you to play through fields is to put three of these up. Or not play through fields, play through hand traps going first. Turn the, the two non dark ones into into a hor into the zombie vampire, middle four. Uh, either you whiff off this or it gets negated. You then need to summon any third dark to turn this plus this into Curious. So that's where these come into play. These can both convert into darks, whether it be Anima uh, for Jed and Dotscaper or Lingerie for just Dot. Uh, and just Dot is, is obviously two by itself. Uh, these could also be milled or discarded and still accomplish that goal, which is why, which is why it was important. This is also the discard outlet. So if I do multiple discards that I want to put in the grave, this could unclog me. So that's why these were just very important, like one of them in the deck. And they still did give me good mills where I had a variety of cards I could summon and both cards performed very well. Thoughtscaper, honestly, was really good. Thoughtscaper was not a card that was originally in my deck. However, we talked with the Ibli thing about getting Ibli comboed. The biggest problem with this deck is getting 
floodgate it out. And that's why my second de deck is built the way it is. And then also, like, while the Yubat matchup I felt was fine, it kind of got dicey when people started playing Ibli. Because if I get Ibli locks, I need drop it or I lose. And even just drop it wasn't enough sometimes. So the double Langriba meant they could never Ibli lock me. Yes, I figured people would know I play Langriba after a certain amount of rounds, even if there wasn't a leak. But with the leak, obviously, they knew about it. Uh, and I never would get Ibli Lock, so I would never get to summon both. But just them knowing I have it meant they couldn't Ibli Lock me, which is more important, because it meant that I could draw my combo cards and just destroy them. That being said, people also just didn't queue Yubel into me that often. They must have not felt it was a good matchup, but they were scared. Because, yeah, if I draw Grass, they're just dead. Like, they very much lose. And that's not to say that even auto win if I don't draw Grass, because my engine can crack through stuff. Call by and Droplet are both very good into uh, the board. And then... Horus cards, the traps can still just do their thing. No not your fusion's interesting thing to talk about. I have not been playing those for a while. Mud Dragon is the only one that's kind of playable. Garuba is unplayable. What the fuck are you fusing Garuba for? You, like not, no aquas. Mud Dragon is only for rank fours, but like because you only have two fusions, I can never see myself not fusion summoning these on the first turn. After the first turn, these aren't as important. This deck wants to get to Snow, and then once you have Snow, you're a Link and an XYZ deck. Uh, and these cards are neat as a supporting cast, but these are fucking broken. Your Links and your shit, and your and your uh, XYZs. Aaron's obviously great as well, because there's several different ways to get tuners into play with Jetson Cron, Distrudo. Uh, Zombie Vampire is good for milling their deck. I think I, I made Baron after Zombie Vampire milling their tuner twice. I, I stole an Ash, and I stole a Gamma, uh, and then made Baron. Uh, and that was very, very cool. But the, the suite of like broken extra deck cards that are ban worthy. Like, in the TCG, this is banned, this is banned, and then this is banned, and this is banned. So four banned extra deck cards. I mean, this is the, the broken extra deck dot deck. Why, two Lingrimos, not one? In the combo, they summon two Iblis, so you need two, or it may as well be zero. I come in and pull up with a Jamba. I may as well have. I may as well have. No Predal Plant? Um, no space. So the cards you'd play over the Lingrimos, if you're playing this in a general format, it's not actually more fusions, because the fusions don't come up. Stapelia never comes up. You can always put back stuff with the Shufflers. Otherwise, you never need to shuffle back. And uh, the card you'd play, IP, is a good one because it makes ending on S like obviously it's better than ending on SP because you just make F SP. There were a couple of times it ended on SP, and if it was IP, it would have just been strictly better, but I didn't have the space. Anaconda is another one that's all right to make Curious easier. Uh, however, without the Snake Eye card, it's not as important because you don't always need to do that. You could also play Zeus, Shooting Riser Dragon, and Deep Sea Prima Donna. Those are all very reasonable cards you can play. Also, if you're not playing Lingaribo or Dotscaper, this should be Lingaribo. However, because I had Lingaribo in the deck, I needed to have different typings. Obviously, if I have Dotscaper, I, these both can't be Cybers. Otherwise, it doesn't contribute to Curious pretty well. Would I play the Snake Eye in the general setting? I'd probably make this work with Snake Eyes. I'd slim the Horus cards down. One of the biggest problems with this card is as broken as it is. As strong this plus this is rough. Uh, they don't always Ash this. Sometimes they Ash this because they don't want to let me put a card in the grave, which makes sense. But if I they let me resolve to get this, I discard this and I don't have a good discard. Then I get Ashed. I can't use this anymore. I only have one other card in hand, and that is a problem. Uh, drawing this and this together is perfect because this baits the ash and even if it discards nothing relevant left on grass should be game also another reason for no left for no crime and heartbeat is you can't set cards when you use these so these cards don't do anything uh when you left arm for grass specifically uh if black goat laughs was legal it'd be awesome for this deck for that reason it'll give you more interrupts you can mill under left arm to bolster your field only there were twice i had to left arm for grass and my field was kind of weak than it, weaker than it needed to be, be or should have been because i couldn't set i still won those games it just becomes closer than you would have liked a dc cup deckless wouldn't look that much different though like you could put in maybe cash Jira cards talents uh more copies of that maybe snake eye cards but it, it wouldn't look, look look too different i think the, the grass being like the biggest key card here I unfortunately may cut the, the this package probably cut like one of the trivia karmas i'm not sure exactly that's something we can maybe mess around with over the next few days in the stream but obviously that's not the setting we're focused in so then for my second deck we need to decide what's my weakest matchup and uh this deck that goes first can win almost anything anytime as long as i don't get shifted uh and, we, and even if i get shifted as long as i live then i still win the game so we decided that the uh biggest problem with this deck is going second versus floodgates like you could beat most decks that go second against if they put in the gates only or just boards uh, depending on the quality of your hand, and that's why we uh, we played this deck. Like, I queued it into Fire King still, and I won several times. But versus decks that flooded you out, it was a problem. So the two decks we saw flooding us out that we could prepare for was Voiceless. The so Voiceless is the deck that sh this deck should have a good matchup against. However, what Voiceless players started doing uh, in the last little bit in the uh, as the attack is they can play Anaconda to send Jaugen plus uh, Albaz, and then they can summon Jaugen. And because of the continuous spells you can't attack or do anything so that's where you need dark ruler or droplet or you just lose and we kind of just not like i can't do anything about that so but what would have otherwise been a good matchup becomes hard 
Uh, and that's why, I, if I knew that wasn't in their deck, I would I would stay on tier against Voiceless. But against the Jaugen Voiceless deck, I had to switch. Same for Branded. If Branded didn't have a Floodgate in it, like if it didn't play, like Puppet's banned, but if they didn't play, if they played DD Orthros, or if they played Jaugen for the same reason, or uh, the, one of the American teams played uh, DD uh, Requiem, like those flooded me out. I need to draw really good to beat those. So instead of risking that, I would rather just switch a deck that beats it. So those were the two decks I was worried about. I wanted outs to those FDKs. Uh, so the idea was we had all the graveyard hate cards still available to us. Bestials, Bells, Crows. Because my deck, my secondary deck was arguably the least important. And then that's why we built the deck like this. So this deck has a good matchup versus Branded specifically already. Because going first, you can search Ash Blossom and Rage. Not Rage, Roar every time. And then Ash plus a Counter Trap plus Princess and Follow Up should demolish your uh, Branded. So that was pretty comfortable. Uh, and then on top of that, it gets the cards like Dark Ruler, Droplet, Book of Eclipse, which were typical. Branded cards kind of just don't do anything against this deck when they go second. And then you also just have Bells, Crows, and Bistrals, and Call Buys, which are all just really good at ripping apart their grave. Uh, and versus Voiceless as well. Fox, you can destroy the back row. Uh, and you just, your, your non engine is so well built to deal with those cards that that's what we're going for. I played this deck once and I got FTK'd. Uh, we, we played this versus the FTK, it wasn't intended, but because my other deck had no hand traps, if I went first with this deck, I would have been fine because the combo is like, it's not nearly as good as tier, but you set up and they gate a princess and an Ash at the very least. And that's like still fine versus an FTK deck. And then this deck has hand traps. So I felt like it would have been good. However, I drew no hand traps when I played this deck. Round one, we played against uh, the other European team and Eric was playing voiceless and branded i played him in the second round he played ryan round one and used imperm and then lost so we did not know what he was playing so if we knew he was playing voiceless and branded those two decks specifically i would have played salad however we did not know what he was playing so <laughs> we played tier and then round two the we hadn't uh we didn't know about the leaks yet or the the team we played against hadn't been leaked we didn't know what they were playing if i knew the guy i played round one of round two was playing branded i would have played this However, I queued up tier and he's playing Brandon and it was annoying. But uh, obviously, you can't always have perfect information. Uh, and ironically, that meant that I only played this deck one time and got FTK'd. But if, if we had known the, the, the matchups like from the start, then we would have played this deck three times. Uh, it is very funny though, because last year, my second deck was also a Cybers deck. It was Marincess and I played it zero times total. This time, I did play my deck once, my, my Cybers deck, and I got FTK'd. My hand was so good if I won the roll. It was Top Gazelle, Mining, Double Circle. Oh no, it was double tear top, one circle. But like it was, oh god, it was so good. That was so tilting. I mean, it was fine. I just focused on the other games. What would you recommend cutting if you want to make this cheaper? This deck? This deck is a structure deck. It's not, not expensive at all. Don't play the, the hand traps. Play play generic hand traps. I'm pretty sure I have a generic version both with Valor and Permer instead of these, but uh, you can cut these as well. They're not super important for, for rated. The sal this salad deck stays the same, uh, except for one thing. For one, <laughs> this was kind of rough. Two, two Sunlight Wolves and two Raging Phoenixes. Because uh, we had to share these with, with Fire King, and obviously you cannot take those away from Fire King. We have to find a way to make this work. Uh, it's why there's one Heat Leo in the deck. We're never relinking this. The reason to play this is we literally just needed another Salmon Grade Link monster. Just one more Salad Link. Because uh, so, this is kind of uh, skimp, obviously. Uh, and you have to be very careful not to run out of these in testing. Jaguar is very important to make sure we had the flow of these still going. You consider the FTK version for Salad? No, I think going first, this deck is pretty good already. Like, this deck's actually really good going first, so I, I don't think it was necessary. Gonna play the Code of Saul variant. Uh, so this is a deck Ryan actually tested a lot in June, uh, and we just thought, like, it's... Yeah, we just thought it's better. Not, like, that card like, fucking sucks. Yeah, it's just so unneeded. Yeah, like, in the TCG and in Monsterville, that card is just not good. It's a non-searchable, except for first Prince pick. You should be searching Ash anyway. It takes up two extra deck spots. There's just no way. Okay, Zach. I think you need this deck. This deck's not bad. This is the deck I practiced more than tier because I, I know tier so well. Like this, the last two or three weeks, I just kept playing this and raided to try and learn, which is rough because this deck fucking is terrible against Fire King and Ubel. Oh my god! I like four different times in raided. I'd uh I'd do the combo, give them a monster, then pop it with Princess. Like I'd weasel, give them a monster, pop with Princess, and they'd fucking trigger Garudix in their hand. Send Kieran, pop my card, and summon and summon Arvada. I was like, what the hell? It, it was kind of lucky because I was playing this deck just for fun in the TCG with Santoli, and then that experience like ended up kind of like shaping the basis for us bringing this deck. I, I mean, even though we didn't use it, this card was good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm very happy with it. The side salad yeah. deck. I know I'm like a huge salad hater, but this deck is actually like fine. Uh, why did you choose to run Horse Prince? It searches Ash. So the combo is 
uh, as you, uh, you get the horse prince, whatever, you rage of fire, get, uh, the, the weasel, uh, you princess, reviving level three, survive gazelle, special weasel from hand, because you have two more salad and grave. This is a tuner, so you make horse prince, special level three fire from the deck, so you summon ash blossom. Uh, then you make, uh, raging phoenix, then you make sunlight wolf for your last two monsters. Weasel effect triggers, uh, goes to the bottom of the deck to draw a card, and then summons a salad from your grave to their field. Do so you summon... Say gazelle to their field. Uh, though you should probably not do that in case they're playing salad. Uh, and you summon it to the zone Sunny Wolf points to. Sunny Wolf then adds back a fire in the graves. So you add back Ash. Princess triggers popping Wolf and Gazelle. So they don't get to keep the monster. And then the Raging Phoenix and Grave triggers. And you can link off the Princess plus the Raging Phoenix for a second Raging Phoenix and add the trap. So that's how you end on this plus this at a bare minimum. I told you it's Kakashi of Team 7. <laughs> yes, this year he was Kakashi. Because he, he consulted for... Uh, he, I, he didn't talk to me directly about Salad, but he talked to Ryan about it a lot. And because uh, and th those two played the deck a lot back in May and June. Yeah, Centoli and I just like their shit decks. <laughs> yeah, the fact we're sold in the Salad decks. Instead of running Gozen in this, uh, Gozen is bad versus both Voiceless and Branded. And I was playing this deck into Branded and Voiceless. So, say, same reason, right? Like, you consider that. I considered Rivalry for a second because it's better versus Branded, but it's not versus Voiceless. And I decided. I mean, it's, it's fine versus that deck as well, but. It decided going first wasn't the problem for this deck. It's going second, and that card wasn't good enough going second. So, and there, yeah. so the rivalry in goes and just kind of did not make the cut. That card just doesn't change your win rate. You win going first anyways. You lose going second anyways. Uh, if you want to play this deck in rated, you would change a couple things. You'd probably find space for extra deck to change. Don't need Typhon really. Don't need Helio. <laughs> want to throw Raging Phoenix obviously if you can. Yeah, you also play Cross Eye. The reason why this can't be a main deck is this deck is so bad in the maxi. It is really bad in the maxi. That's like the biggest problem with it as well. So it's always like, no matter how comfortable I am with the deck, I'm always going to be crossing my fingers a bit because if I get maxied, you just you literally can't do anything. It's give your opponent three draws for one negate or pass on nothing. So it, sometimes it, it's two draws. Huh? Sometimes it's two draws if they Yay. change uh, out. <laughs> Did we consider Buffalo? No, it's more important to do the one card combos to search Ash. Did I miss anything, Ryan? I guess this is a deck that you contributed heavily towards as well. Don't think the deck's changed much in the last few months. Did you consider playing a stun deck for Worlds? So we didn't play a stun deck because we just think those decks can't win going second. And if you want an auto win going first deck, you can just buy a combo deck. Like, I would have rather played an FTK deck, I think. Well, maybe not when lose to hand traps, but that's what tier kind of is, right? It feels like you should win most of the time going first. Were well, there surprises in my matchups? I didn't expect super heavy, super heavy FTK. That's not something I expected to play against. I thought Stellar would play it. I didn't think KG would. Sure. They went to another group, though, yeah. Why do you think Konami is only giving gems to 250 random fans of Team 7? Uh, not Konami, I think it's stupid as well. I also voted for our, my own team, so... Wait, do we get rewards yet? No. What does I, it give out? I assume after maintenance. When's maintenance? <laughs> Tomorrow night. I want to swap the old world sporter with the new world sporter. No, wait, where do I go for that? Pick your champion thing? I I have a strange feeling it might be the same. Of course it'll be the same. I had confidence in myself this time. Team 7! I voted for Brazil.